I wanted to start by focusing on today's first reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Notice how it begins, the wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and singing. There's a very beautiful analogy here. You know, try to imagine a very dry, desolate land, desert. There's no water. There's no vegetation. You know, sometimes we've seen images of soil that's kind of cracked because it's just so, so dry. But this dry land will rejoice. In other words, water is going to come. The water will fill that land. The water will, you know, make it possible for the land to bear fruit. So plants will sprout. They will spring up. And it, it goes on to talk about Lebanon and Carmel and Sharon. In other words, areas where there's a lot of vegetation, beautiful areas. It's going to become like an oasis. So they just imagine that transition from this land that's very, very dry and barren to an oasis where there's like a pool, running water and all kinds of beautiful plants and greenery and, and beautiful flowers of all different colors. And of course, once you have the plant life, you're gonna have the animal life. So you got birds and all kinds of animals coming to drink from the water. So that transformation from death to life, from barrenness to fruitfulness. So very beautiful imagery, and the land in and of itself cannot do this. The land is paralyzed. The water must come from somewhere else, from some other source. And, and this brings us to today's gospel reading. Here's this paralytic. He's paralyzed. He can't do anything on his own. He's totally dependent on others for his survival, for his existence. And so he has some friends or who knows maybe they were just people in the crowd and thinking here's a man who's crippled why don't we bring him to jesus so they decide to bring him to jesus and they can't get to him they probably conceive of you know what can we do can we wait for him afterwards jesus is so busy we may not have another chance this is our only chance so they decide to go around the back of the house and bring the paralytic up to the top of the house they have to drag him up with ropes or whatever they make a hole in the roof and let him down. Now imagine if you're the paralytic. Imagine that happening to you. Like you have no choice, but in some sense you have to entrust yourself to these men. You know, imagine being dragged up by these ropes and how secure are they? Like who knows? Who knows how he was tied up? Or even being let down in front of our Lord. He had to entrust himself to them and then... He has to entrust himself to Christ. But it's interesting when our Lord initially forgives his, his sin, and it's important that, to note that our Lord initially forgives him for his sin, and only afterwards heals him of, of his paralysis. And yes, our Lord may have planned this on purpose just to convince the Pharisees and the scribes who were there and, you know, questioning who can forgive sins. Only God can forgive sins. So this basically verifies that Jesus is God. But it says, when he, our Lord, when he saw their faith, plural, not the man's faith, he saw their faith. So that may have included the faith of the paralytic, yes. It may have been just the faith of those who brought the paralytic to Christ. So when he saw their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven you. Based on the faith of all of them. And this is very, very significant because you and I, we have faith. We have the ability to bring others to Christ. And seeing our faith, God may forgive them for their sins. God may heal them of their blindness, of their spiritual paralysis. Why does our Lord forgive the man his sins first? Why didn't he just heal him? He knew what they really wanted was physical healing. But he's trying to emphasize not just that he has the power to forgive sins, but the forgiveness of sins is far, far more important. You see, when we are spiritually dead, when we are separate from God, we're spiritually paralyzed. 
And when we are spiritually paralyzed, we cannot bear spiritual fruit. And it's only spiritual fruit that can to totally fulfill us or, or begin that process of fulfillment. So, you know, go, going back to that analogy of, of the dry desert, the barren land, right? And compare that to the oasis with beautiful flowers and plants and, and birds and, and animals and the chirping of birds. And it's just beautiful. This is what God wants for our souls. But the obstacle to all of this is our sins and our lack of trust in God, lack of entrusting ourselves to him. We cannot do this on our own. The water, the life-giving waters, need to come from outside of ourselves. It comes through baptism. It's, it comes through Christ who, who made the sacraments available to us. And of course, we need confession. We need to have our sins forgiven because this is far more important. And it's, it's our sins, the sin of Adam and Eve, that causes all these physical paralysis and all the struggles and, and difficulties that we experience in this world. So by rooting sin out of our lives, we become better individuals. We become happier. We bear more fruit. We grow in virtue. We grow in goodness. And we see this in the lives of the saints. Why were the saints so popular? Because they were full of love, full of goodness. And very often God even worked miracles for them. In other words, the life-giving waters of God flowed through these saints to everyone around them. And God is calling each one of us to do the same, to be like the saints. Just a reminder, we will have uh, confessions here in the parish tomorrow evening, Tuesday night from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And there will be three of us, uh, three priests here uh, available to hear your confessions. Uh, other parishes are offering confessions also. I think it's this week and, and next week also. So check the bulletin. There's some um, confession times in other parishes also if you're interested in that. And uh, if, you know, if there's a particular parish you want to go to, you can also contact them to find out their confession times.